And this is Walter O'Keefe inviting you to listen in on the Nightline. Tonight, live the incredible life of ages yet to come in a time that might be a million years from now on X-1. Now, an incredible story of the world beyond. Countdown for blast off. X minus five, four, three, two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could-be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents X X, 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 minus one. Tonight, Early Model by Robert Sheckley. But first, hear this. When you swing and sway to a Latin beat, life is lovely, life is sweet. You make it Pabst, cause Pabst makes it perfect. Yes, Pabst makes it perfect. Just as we always have ever since 1844. So next time, you make it Pabst because Pabst makes it perfect. America's Blue Ribbon Beer from the Pabst Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yes, Pabst makes it perfect. Now, X minus one and the Robert Sheckley story, Early Model. Of course, Professor Sliggett claimed the trouble was that the Protec was an early model, but then he invented it. He sprung the thing on me just before I took off for my scouting contact mission to Tells 4 in the Betelgeuse sector. Here, Bentley, put this on. Well, what is it? A new model. It's called a Protec. What's it for? Now, you'll wear it on your mission. Now, look, Sliggett, I already have to carry enough equipment to give varicose veins to an elephant. Linguacine, that's 22 pounds. I can't do without it or I can't translate native languages. Concentrated food, water, subspace radio, weapons, medical kit. Now, how much does this thing weigh? 72 pounds. Try it on. Look, I won't promise it to It fits take... right on your back. Here, I'll snap the harness. Hmm, fits fine. Ah, it digs into my back. There's a sharp thing back That's there. That's the sensory link. It has to be at that angle. But my We're back... We're working on the problem. Now, don't worry. What does it do? Protec is a perfect protection for initial planet contact. There are pseudo-protein computer banks and an Anderson Woodward force field projector. Wherever the Protec senses danger... Yeah, look, I'll show you. I take this slide rule and swing at you. Hey, where did everybody go? Who turned out the lights? Hey, Sliggett, where am I? Sliggett, get me out of here. Sliggett! What happened? The protect went on. It encased you in the AW force field. I release by master control. You can turn it off with this button on your chest. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, but 73 pounds. Well, this is an early model. I've used every weight-saving device possible, but unfortunately, early models are always a little bulky. All right, all right. How do I take it off? I'm not going to tell you. Huh? We're not going to take chances of having valuable equipment discarded just because it might be a little uncomfortable. Bentley, you're going to an alien planet. It's necessary that you be protected at all times. Look, I've got enough sense to figure out when to wear this thing. Yeah, suppose you find the natives seemingly friendly. You'd want to take off this heavy, uncomfortable protect. But suppose you misjudge their attitude. Sligert, I can take care of myself. That's what Atwood said before he left for a Topus Three. We never heard from him. Bentley, can you turn a knife thrust from the rear? Have you got eyes in the back of your head? Protect has. We're not going to risk eight million dollars worth of equipment just because you might be uncomfortable. Suppose it blows a fuse or, or pops a wire. We've got triple everything with a power supply good for a century. 
Bentley, after this field test, the Protec will be standard equipment for all explorers. Well, all right. I'll try to get used to it. But it feels like I'm carrying a 72-pound monkey on my back. I carried it for six weeks on the way to Tells 4. And the added weight loused up my coordination and landing, so I burned out about seven acres with backlash from the braking tube. The radio receiver buried in my ear itched, and my back was rubbed raw from the carrying straps. I piled on my linguazine and the other equipment and staggered out. My instructions were to fraternize with the aborigines and establish a trade pact, if possible. I found two of them standing outside the tail fins when the hull had cooled enough to get out. They were bipeds, orange-skinned with thick, short tails, and they were armed with stone axes and clubs. I stepped out of the lock, and they started talking fast. I realized I hadn't turned on my linguistine, so I tuned it in and threw the switch. I dare say it's a manifestation of some supernatural quality, eh, Wassel, old chap? Without a doubt, old man. You know how the linguistine works, instantaneous semantic translation. Well, mine was made by the Gorley Laboratories just outside London, and naturally, they had the word tapes recorded by BBC announcers. It takes a little getting used to when you hear some walking vegetable from the Canopa system talking like the home service. Well, the Tellians were pretty excited by my arrival. How strange. Unbelievable. Most improper, you know. I suppose it can talk. I... I come as a friend. A friend. Well, it does talk. Dreadful accent. But what can you expect, eh? Foreigners, you know. You know, old boy? I definitely sense an evil. Oh, now, come. We're both ghost doctors. Surely if there was an evil, we'd both sense it. Well, let's ask, shall we? Let's. I say, are you evil? Me? Why, yes. You see, we're the village ghost doctors. It's our job to ferret out evil, so to speak. It's our cup of fugal, so to speak. Are you evil? Oh, no. No. He says he's not evil. Well, how do you know? If he doesn't, who does? My dear fellow, appearances aren't everything. Surely you recall the legend of Hatape, the gods tempted the chief... Please, by... my dear chap, I'm as well aware of religious precedent as you are. The two of them stood there, lashing their orange tails, accusing each other of heresy. The linguistine finally couldn't handle the theological discussion and cut out before overload blew a circuit. Eventually, they must have decided something because the short one carrying the stone axe turned to me. Stranger, we've decided not to kill you. Not yet, anyway. We'll go to the village and purify ourselves, then we'll initiate you into the club. The club? The Society of Ghost Doctors. You see, no evil thing can become a ghost doctor. It just isn't done, you know. Oh, we'll find out the truth that way. <laughs> Clever, eh? I'm deeply grateful. But if you're evil, we'll destroy you. Have to. Our job, you know. You are listening to Early Model, tonight's attraction on X-1. For the big things in your life, be ready with United States Savings Bond. That's the new savings bond with the higher interest rate. The improved Series E savings bonds that now mature faster to pay you back extra dollars faster. Yes, when you think of saving, think of savings bonds. They offer you the safe, easy way to save regularly. Safe because each bond is backed by the United States government itself. Easy because you can buy bonds either where you bank or through the payroll savings plan where you work. And you get back $4 at maturity for every three invested, so you earn extra dollars. But the big news is that the maturity period is shortened to only 8 years and 11 months. So join the bond wagon. Start a family savings program. Invest in improved Series E bonds today. And hold the bonds you already own. Now, back to X-1 and tonight's story, Early Model. Sliggert, calling Professor Sliggert at home base. Come in. Go ahead, Bentley, report. I'm in the village now. 
They're about to initiate me as some kind of priest. All I have to do is pass some kind of tests. And, uh, by the way, if I don't pass, they're going to kill me. <laughs> ah, that's good. What's funny? They can't hurt a hair on your head, not with Protec on the job. They seem awfully confident that they can. Primitive cultures always overestimate the power of their weapons. Don't worry. Just let Protec take care of you. Go ahead, old boy. It's purified ceremonial food. But I can't. Why not? We purified with seven sprinklings of strychnine, according to ritual. It's a, a taboo. Uh, I'm only allowed to eat my own supplies. A, a tribal taboo, you know. How primitive. Positively pagan. Well, oh, shall we get on with it? Uh, we'll dispense with the written exam and get right down to the oral. Mm. Tell me, what do you think of evil? Well, uh, it isn't good. Ah. Well put. Well, in that case, you have no objection to receiving the sacred and very holy spear that uh, Cran Clue brought down from the abode of the small gods, the brandishing of which brings good on a man? Oh, I would be honored to receive it. Very well, then. The ceremony can commence. Oh, stranger from the skies, accept from us the spear of sanctity. Evil cannot abide the presence of this spear. Take, then, our blessings with it, here, here, oh stranger, take the spear! What? Oh, that confounded Protec, where's that release button? Sligert, Sligert, come in! Oh, he's probably out to lunch. Gotta get that force field off. There! Uh, listen, listen, I, I, I'm terribly sorry, Begin but the I... purification, Dodge! We are in the presence of evil spirits! Oh, no, 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 I can explain. You cannot accept the sacred spear? Well, you see... I've got this protective device, it's sort of like a shield, you know? It doesn't like spears. It doesn't trust them. You couldn't give me a, a sacred gourd? Nonsense. Who ever heard of a sacred gourd? Poppycock. Look, you'll just have to take my word for it. I'm not evil, really. Scout's honor. Our course is clear. Transparent. We won't kill you at once. We'll pray for you through the night. And perhaps in the morning, things will turn out better. If not, sorry, old boy, but you understand our position. We'll just have to kill you. Can't be helped. Regulations, you know. Yes, yes, Bentley, I understand. Well, primitive people are notoriously treacherous. They might have stabbed you with the spear. Look, Sliggett, I'm positive there was no such intent. After all, you have to start trusting people sometime. Not with a billion dollars worth of equipment in your charge. Don't you understand? The Protec wouldn't let me accept their sacred spear. That means I might be evil. Now, what if I can't pass the initiation test tomorrow? Look, tell me how to take it off. Oh, no. We want you back alive. There's no way they can hurt you through the Protec field. Now, try to have a little faith. <laughs> campfires burned all night, and I could hear the chants of the ghost doctors. At least three or four times during that night, the Protec force field howled on and off, but I was too tired to care. In the morning, the two Tellians came to see me and stood switching their fat orange tails politely while the linguacine translated for me. There were great sounds from your hut last night, sounds of torment, as if you were wrestling with a devil, so to speak. I'm a restless sleeper. Yes. Yes, of course. Quite. By the way, Elting, did you pray for purification last night? Hmm? Oh, yes, 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 I did. And was your prayer granted? Yes, oh, yes, sure, certainly. Not a, not a bit of evil around me. Well, if you can't be initiated, we'll have to destroy you. We made that clear, didn't we? Oh, yes, quite clear. The initiation ritual took the whole day. It was sort of a cross between a Shriners convention and a performance of Das Rheingold at the Met. Luckily, no one tried to hand me a ceremonial spear or point a club in my direction, so the Protec kept its grimy force field to itself. Finally, around supper time, the Tellians pounded the last tail on the ground, and everyone stopped and paid close attention. Oh, brothers, this alien has come across the vast emptiness to be our brother. With this initiation, we purge him of evil and make him one of us. Brother, now you are a ghost doctor with all the privileges and perquisites pertaining thereto. And in friendship, I extend to you the claw 
of friendship. Well, thanks. You have only to shake claws, and the ceremony is concluded. All right, brother. Give me some skin. Slip me seven. No, no, no listen, turn it off. He just wants to shake hands. You're spoiling everything. Off, off. Now, where's that button? Off! <laughs> evil, evil, evil. Well, there it is, you know. We hoped we could muddle through, but you can't win them all, you know. There's only one thing left. Kill the devil! About 30 of the Tellians heaved stone spears at me, and naturally I disappeared inside the Anderson Woodward force field, and the spears rattled off the whining coruscating power sphere. I tried to walk back to the ship, but the protect went on about every half step, and at that rate it would take me about a month to cover the ground. I figured I'd wait them out. And then I noticed that the air inside the field began to go stale. I came out of the field. The Tellians were sitting around. Rennick picked up a spear. Evil. Wait, wait. Hold off. Uh, uh, Fins. Fair play. Fair play? Yeah. I say, Rennick, he's due a three-minute sanctuary under the sacred law of his sipple. You really think so? He invoked fair play. True. True. All right, monster. You have three minutes. Thanks. Hello. Hello, Sliggert. Come in, Sliggert. Ah, there you are, Bentley. Listen, you've got to get me out of this. They're trapping me in the Protec. You mean the Protec is saving you from harm? No, no, they keep activating it. They'll starve me out. Now, don't get panicky. Just sit tight in the Protec field till they see they can't harm you. You confounded idiot. There's no air in there. The force field cuts it off. I'll choke. Oh, oh, dear, that's true, isn't it? Ah, don't worry. We'll correct that in future models. Oh, thanks a lot. But what am I going to do right now? How do I get this thing off? Well, now I am sorry. To tell the truth, I designed the harness so that you couldn't get out under any circumstances. Oh, you lousy... Please, please, let's keep our heads. If you can hold out for a couple of months, we might be able I to... can't. The air, the water... And I hate to mention it, but they seem to be building fires around me. I'm sorry. Your three minutes are up. Yeah. We are going to destroy you with fire. Yeah, it's traditional that way. Uh, my dear chap, would you like to kindle the first blaze? Oh, after you, old fellow. Remember, I burned the last evil monster. True, true. Oh, uh, monster. Yes? Do you have a light? I knew I was cooked, one way or the other. They started to light fires around me in a circle, and the protect snapped on. I had to get out. Of course, when I did, the Tellians would cheerfully spear me to death. But at least I had a chance of running. The field snapped on again. I grabbed my knife from the tool chest and hacked at the thick duroplastic webbing of the harness. I came out of the field long enough to hear Sliggert shouting in my ear. What are you doing? Cutting my way out of this fire trap. You don't dare destroy government equipment. This will go down on your 201 file. Look, I'm trapped inside the field as long as they feed the fire. And considering how they feel about devils, they'll probably keep it up a couple of hundred years. Uh oh, they're pushing the fire closer. Goodbye. <whistles> I tore at the straps with my wire cutters and knife. I could only work when the field was off. The Protec protected itself. Finally, I ripped the harness off just as the field went on, and I was thrown 20 feet into the fire. But I landed on my feet and was off and running. It took the Tellians just 100 yards to catch up and gently lay a stone club along the side of my head. Ugh. Oh, well, let's get it over with. You're going to kill me. Let's not make a production out of it. Oh, but my dear fellow, we don't want to kill you. Dear me, no. We knew you were a good man. It was the devil we wanted. I don't mean to be tactless, but you do know you had a devil riding on your back. We tried to purify him, but he was too strong. <laughs> the fire took the starch out of him, though. The devil... Devil on my back. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I guess so, yes. You know, our village is very proud to have such a powerful devil chained up inside a fire ring. Uh, tell me, my dear chap, you haven't by any chance any more devils like that in your homeland? No, that's the only one. Pity. Huh? We'd really be tickled orange if we could have a few more uh, to worship, you know. You mean trade for them? Why, yes. I'm sure every village would want one. Well, I think that can be arranged. And you haven't seen anything. We'll sell you devils that really are devils. After all... <laughs> This one is just an early model.
Fred Collins again. And I'll be back to tell you a word about tonight's X-1 in a moment. Bob! Bob Barker! Yes, Ralph? Ah, Bob. I uh, just want to say that I heard you emceeing the Truth or Consequences program on NBC Radio, and I thought you were great, boy. Well, that's real, quite a real great. I mean it. <laughs> Coming from none other than Ralph Edwards, the creator of and original Truth or Consequences MC. You really liked the show, Ralph? Oh, I'll say I did. It was wonderful hearing it on radio again. It sounded better than ever. Well, no one should know better than you, Ralph. But really, we just can't miss. Our contestants are wonderful. Yes, the I know. The are out of this world. Mm-hmm. Surprise family reunions, the gigantic whisper contest. Yes. A dream world of jackpot prizes, especially for NBC radio listeners. Really? And not just once a week, Ralph, but every weekday morning. No That's kidding. That's right. Monday through Friday. Can you beat it? I'm going to right now, Bob. So long, folks. You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features Make Me an Offer by Con Blomberg. Galaxy Magazine, on your newsstand today. Tonight, X-1 has brought you Early Model, a story from the pages of Galaxy written by Robert Sheckley and adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. Featured in our cast were Bob Hastings, Joseph Bell... Anthony Campbell Cooper, and Alastair Duncan. This is Fred Collins speaking. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production. There's excitement in the air at night, and Nightline brings it to you. Here in Nightline with Walter O'Keefe. Next on most of these NBC stations. (laughs) 